Good morning. Good morning. What what time is it for you? Uh, quarter after six right now. Quarter after. I guess some. It is. Know. Where in the world are you, Jonathan? I'm in Singapore. Huh? So it's uh, twenty past six in the. Okay, so there's a twelve hour difference. It's twenty past six in the evening here, so it's got to be the morning for you, I guess. Yeah. Flip, flip, flip around. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you're on the other side of the sun uh, setting, I guess it is. It looks like it's getting dark by you. Yes, it will get dark at seven o'clock almost every day of the year. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I guess so. That makes sense. On the equator, yeah, yeah, basically on the equator or just above it. I have not had the opportunity to make be to Singapore yet, so uh, it's on one of those lists. You know, I've got to check off eventually. So. <laughs> eventually, yes, yes, when yeah. we open up. We've got a partial lockdown at the moment, so I've got my mask at the ready just in case we have inspectors. This is a co-working space. I see. So, so te technically, I've I've just uh, committed a felony and on record for it. There we are. Uh, yeah, we are recording, so you are. Are you? On the <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 rules for just about everything now. Anyway, um, yeah. I had a look at your blog, so uh, the uh, the IBM blog that you sent me. Um, yeah, great. So, multi-form API management, is it an API or not? Hmm. It's a. We shall question. find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now I see that we are we're being watched by at least. Uh, well, how do those numbers work? When I see the, uh, I see the. So actually, hello Olga. I think uh, she's here. In fact, I'm going to just type in the chat something. Just to ah, there's you. Olga. Hi, Olga. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, well, I do hope, Jonathan, nobody shows up to uh, knock on your door and take you away during the session or afterwards. You know, I, I'm ready for it. <laughs> um, okay, um, just welcome anyone who comes. It's been a little bit slow this afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure why, uh, at least from the round table. Um, there seem to be concurrent tracks on. So we'll give, it a, we'll give it a bit of time. Do you have any hard stop, Tony, if we go past the 25 minutes? Uh, no, no, I think I'm I'm good to continue a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I believe you don't have any sort of slide deck or anything like that. So. No, I just was looking forward to the conversation. So. Um, All right. Okay. Well, at the moment, we've got a couple of people here, and we will carry on there. Let me see. Okay. Great. We got. So I, I see that you've spent quite some time uh, IBM. Yeah, I've been here for uh, since 2005. Uh, prior to that, had been um, <clears throat> had an illustrious career in um, mainframe programming and did a lot of year 2000 work uh, as the millennia was coming to an end, <laughs> like probably many people did. And uh, uh, during that, that time, I found out about integration technologies. And that really piqued my interest and uh, joined up with uh, Essential Software that eventually, through a number of acquisitions and divestitures, wound up at IBM. Um, so, uh, just... as, as many do, as many do yeah. through, the, through the acquisition. And I'm not sure what, whether that has yet stopped at IBM. No, we've had a, a few. Um, well, you know, we continue. Obviously, the uh, 2000. I want to say maybe four through 2012, you know, tremendous number of uh, expansion in the software category. Uh, but uh, yeah, very specific uh, acquisitions that we've done over the past six months to years of uh, robotic process automation, IT management, uh, a lot of artificial intelligence technologies. And so, um, you know, a very, very specific and, and kind of tactical, uh, you know, acquisitions to round out some areas that we think are high growth areas. Yes, yes. We'll be interested if, if you know, all these loosely coupled systems will come together. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've all got APIs. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, one of the things that we um, are doing as part of our cloud pack strategy, and uh, you know, I guess for the recording's purposes, cloud packs being a um, uh, set of capabilities that we bring together in functional areas like IT management, integration, uh, digital business automation. And um, 
uh, running on type of a OpenShift Kubernetes environment. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, the strategy that we have there is you know how do we uh, harmonize the uh, the middleware space around the shared API catalog, reusable components. We call it automation services. And so uh, you know that kind of like joining hands in harmony, <laughs> very much the way that uh, we have uh, you know this view of uh, wonderful to get the the containerization settled uh, okay. for common admin, deployment, operation, scale out, you know, resiliency, but uh, then to, to build out from the user experience uh, level, you know, these kind of uh, jointly API enabled uh, uh, usage experiences. So. Yes, and also, I uh, hate to use the word apps because it's microservices, right? More business focused microservices, not, not, not always the plumbing or the architecture underneath it. Yeah. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll kick off the session. I'll, introduce you Tony I'll Great. talk about the session and then maybe you could put some context um, and and wait around the introduction so um, uh, welcome anyone who's coming in as you come in we will continue uh, conversation and feel free to put questions in the chat and we, we'll both see them so today uh, we have from um, for the India API days we have from the other side of the world <laughs> um, uh, Tony um, Kirk Kirksio. Is that Chris, correct? Yeah. Yep, you got it. Uh, who's going to be talking about multi-form API management event messages and more. All right. Uh, Tony yep. is um, well, we were just chatting beforehand, well uh, seasoned, experienced, I think is a better word. Uh, director, currently director API management and gateway cloud integration at IBM uh, and with uh, illustrious career from mainframe through into this more integration. And it seems to not stop. It's moving such a pace right now. The uh, The topic today is obviously around the API economy and a, in particular API management, automation of API and um, accumulation of the API assets and making them accessible to people. Um, the, the platform would be uh, API Connect and we're gonna hear more about that. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to to hearing what Tony's got to say about um, how he sees all these different APIs being pulled together, being accessed, and being uh, used within a bigger framework. Um, so Tony, with that, if you'd like to sort of introduce yourself and the uh, specific area that you have. Sure, Jonathan. Thank you uh, for kicking us off, and uh, you know, appreciate you, you have a hard job there pulling together lots of different facts in a quick amount of time to cycle through as as we do these API Days events. Uh, you know, appreciate that. Just to let you know, your your mic got a little bit weak when you tilted it up, so just uh, when you come back on. But um, the um, uh, yeah, very glad to be here. I've uh, been part of a number of API Days in the past, um, and excited to talk about multi-form API management. This is a it's an area that I think only analysts have known about for a number of years, but it's really never had a good name. And I've been wanting to give it a name because uh, uh, usually, uh, you know, kind of it's it's worth its weight in gold uh, when we can start to form common terminology and have discussions. And, and APIs uh, have been around forever. They've gone through a whole life cycle of history. Uh, and uh, with the API economy, last several years, obviously a peaked interest. Uh, in how do we uh, transform, you know, maybe digitally transform, but transform organizations the way they develop uh, around this API model, uh, largely represented through Swagger, open API definitions, uh, but now not exclusively so. And, you know, again, I think everybody's <clears throat> had in mind that we need to broaden uh, the value of the API landscape, uh, you know, in meaningful ways. And I think multi-form is, is for sure one of them, as we'll talk about. <laughs> you're going to carry on there. Yeah, no um, problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I, we, we've all got our own uh, understandings of, of APIs and our, our own different a experience of it. Is there a simple way that you would describe um, multi-form APIs from the technologist perspective? Because many of the people here are from that background. What, what does it consist of? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, at the bare definition, application programming interface, right? APIs have been around for a long time, and they've looked many different ways, but they, you know, largely were never consistent. And so, obviously, the benefits of Open API to add RESTful interface, largely JSON schema, um, and have you know a very predictable way that anyone can interact with the API with just a core set of information. 
has been really material for, again, I think advancing the utilization, usability, utility even, uh, you know, what an API is. <clears throat> but um, if you follow, uh, you know, Gardner, Forrester, others, uh, they've been talking about things like beyond rest for a long time. You know, how do we get beyond rest? Um, and, <clears throat> you know, the, there's lots of applications, uh, middleware, uh, but, you know, SaaS, others that um, have leveraged uh, other models for integration. And, and one of the you know, key one that's been around for a little bit is that GraphQL. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, you get protocols, you get the standards, and, and maybe we're still using the same communication models, but a different way that we interact with like GraphQL, SQL statements that are the, the, the gem, you know, of what that interaction model is. Uh, and uh, obviously many large companies making GraphQL the basis for that interaction. Uh, not the open API definition. And so, you know, if you're at a, an enterprise trying to make a choice of, you know, how do I go forward in one of these ways, uh, you may still have a lot of soap around and some of that soap is still really meaningful to your organization. And, and you have, you know, open API investments that you've made in corners of the organization and new teams now, which are um, emerging in GraphQL. And largely these things are, you know, services and they've been kind of looking very servicey. But then you get into this other space, which I think is the more exciting one, which is event-based architecture, you know, and, and these models, you know, so REST, uh, open API definition, uh, GraphQL, they don't really hold, they don't really apply, you know, in this event-based architecture world. And so, you know, we see these inflections of different technologies that are coming together and now, how do we say, you know, all of this stuff that we've gotten the benefit out of with open API, you know, in, in, in the API economy revolution the last several years and, and bring that same set of benefits over here into new things like this, uh, again, large interest, growing interest in event based architectures, right? Are, are they inconsistent or are they consistent? You know, I think what we could say is they should be consistent. And how then do we make them consistent? And I think that's the exciting area where, you know, is that an API too? Right, like, and, and and we could talk more specifically about why why do we think that's an API? Uh, but let me take a breath there, Jonathan, and a cup of coffee. Swig of my coffee. <laughs> yes, it's early in the morning, so uh, just wanted to put some substance, uh, you know, some relatable terms that we already know: uh, REST APIs, endpoints, GraphQL. For some, you know, not everyone's already there, and event-based APIs. So we just know what we're playing with here. It's nothing, nothing maybe too new but it's something which IBM and yourself is trying to formulate and push forward. And you know, one of the questions that came through, and there's quite a few actually submitted, which I will come to later, and I think they're related, but just to put a footing on this, um, this content is what led IBM, what trends led IBM to, um, to prompt them to come to the multi-form API? I think you spoke a bit about it earlier. Why the leadership, if, mm. if, if that's yeah. what it is? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we, um, for a couple of years, have been looking at our investments around the Kafka space. And um, actually, we have, we have a customer advisory board for our integration technologies. And in, in, in this integration space, a lot of you know brands that you would recognize, API Management, API Connect, for one, uh, MQ, you know, part of our customer advisory board set that we focus on, uh, what was formerly Integration Bus, but now App Connect. And so uh, users of all these technologies, and they form a lot of solutions together. But when we started looking at the event streams, uh, a number of things had come up. You know, one was some of the use cases where it is... Um, uh, and this is uh, even dating back as like far as four years ago, where uh, one of the early adopters we were working with around Kafka, uh, they had said, you know, our, our use cases for external parties uh, to get updates on their uh, airline uh, app, <laughs> you know, in, in this model of uh, I'm building an application and, and I have been using my airline app a lot this past year, of course. But, uh, you know, I recognize in it that there's two different models by which uh, that app works with me. Uh, one, I log in and I, I check my uh, my flight times and see if they've changed, or I check which seat I'm in, or the boarding time. And those are all rest, you know, it kind of I request it and I get a response, you know, and it's when I clicked it. But in those wonderful times when I'm, I get my free upgrade to first class, that's an event, right? Uh, the airline lets me know, and uh, you know, of course, uh, any any of the airlines, uh, they work with many many different business partners. 
uh, all who are building similar experiences, all who want to tap into that same kind of your upgrade has been approved <laughs> uh, work stream, you know, or your package has now shipped, uh, you know, as we've done a lot this past year with with COVID. And so, um, you know, that model for a partner to build uh, an engaging experience for their customers around your infrastructure, things that you do both from a request response as well an event based, it's very coupled in building the right digital experience. And so, you know, we, we let that kind of sink in and, and said, you know, at the end of the day, we want these things to behave like APIs, regardless of what the technology is. If I have an internal development community uh, who I want to enable, if I have a business partner community that I want to enable, I want them to be able to go to the same place, uh, get, you know, a common understanding of how do you work with me? You know, if I'm sharing my assets, I'm sharing my algorithms, and I question about some algorithm this morning too, but like um, each of these should be reusable components in uh, regardless of the protocol, the standard, et cetera. I want that same level of uh, discovery, security, subscribability, uh, you know, and, and it should have those in, in meaningful ways that come together. And so it really was those kind of interaction models with our customers where we start to say, you know, the, the pattern for adoption, the ways that we're trying to enable uh, you know, if you're leveraging uh, like an async API uh, on a Kafka backend, uh, uh, those same benefits uh, around, again, subscribability, findability, <laughs> testability, right, that, that you get out of an API portal. Let's get those to those same kind of endpoints the same way. And uh, we didn't have a name for it before, right? You know, a couple months ago, um, there was uh, nobody was really tackling, you know, what are these all APIs? And I had some really interesting conversations with the analyst community is, uh, you know, is it an API or is it not an API? And uh, a, <laughs> very interesting. John. I sent uh, that query out to uh, uh, a number of different analysts and uh, some of the leading, and it got such a diversity of opinions back. And uh, you know, it, and it's fair because again, you know, this is kind of some new territory. We said let's harmonize around this landscape. Uh, if it is an endpoint, um, and it would benefit from the 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 management API management landscape. Uh, we want it to be treated like an API. You know, it, it is a way that you are interact, interacting. It is an application. You are programming. Uh, let's get back to the basics there and say, okay, uh, we're all in. It's an API. <clears throat> we're going to manage it, socialize it, secure it, uh, create it, you know, in, in that same consistent model, uh, you know, to the extent that we can for any particular technology. And not every technology is equal in that way. All right. Well, that was yeah, yeah, it's great to hear that. I'm hearing a leadership position here. It's doing. This. People are not sort of jumping up and down necessarily for this, but the leaders are coming up saying, "Look, it's not just about documentation. It's also about sort of um, uh, making it available to everybody who wants it and who's confident this approach to explore new services and new access." Yeah, I, I even love your, your your word documentation there because. Um, one of the other customer experiences I wanted to circle back to was, uh, uh, and I never started on the customer advisory board. Let me get back to that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the uh, individuals about two meetings ago uh, had said, you know, we've been using Kafka now for uh, well over a year. We've got all of our development teams who have picked it up, started developing event streams because that was the mission that we gave them. You know, we want to get you know your data into there and we have events. Uh, but they said, you know, what we haven't had is the adoption side yet. And I recognize and they recognize uh, was uh, nobody could find this stuff. They don't really know where to go. Uh, there's no portal for it. You know, everybody understands it's in a topic somewhere, but we don't know what those topics are. Uh, we don't, you know, and, and now Kafka has obviously got schemas for topics, but, you know, it's not really necessarily great tooling to go find out about that schema. And so that documentation, right? Like, uh, yes, you can go someplace, you know, and it is defined and you could find out about that schema. Uh, and, you know, if I'm looking for customer address changes, I, I like I have a prescriptive model because of it's in the API portal, which I could go actually learn that and find that documentation. Not everyone knows about Kaf GraphQL. I mean, they know about it, but they haven't used it or Kafka schemas, but they know that it might be useful. So it's a stepping stone for them. Yes. Um, OK, so I think I maybe answered this one. Teams have got REST APIs and open APIs. Are there other standards emerging? Well, we talked about Kafka. Uh, was there was there anything else that people should mm -hmm. know about? Yeah, well, you know, um, we we've chosen to use async API as a way to describe Kafka. Uh, we think uh, there's uh, a lot of um, value in, in that definition, and 
uh, I understand it's actually moving towards an, uh, being sponsored by an, uh, uh, maybe the Linux Foundation. Hopefully, you know that continues to go through. So we do like when all of these definitions and standards are in the open and everybody can collaborate around that without uh, different weight in the organization. But Open API, again, because of its affinity to uh, sorry, uh, Async API, because of its affinity to Open API. Uh, a great way to look at how we could describe event-based architectures. So uh, for sure, I would say that's a standard. And we've applied it in, in the now to Kafka. Uh, but our, our view is that we want to take that and apply that to other, you know, as is already happening in the async API landscape being applied to other technologies. And I'll say, you know, as we look forward, uh, applying that to MQ for enterprise messaging uh, is an area that we're very specifically interested in. Uh, given the you know thousands and thousands of people who are using MQ across the enterprise landscape, uh, in uh, thinking about the value that we could be bringing to some of those MQ customers in that same model. Okay, so uh, thanks for that. I think we've got a well. I hope we've got a better understanding collectively what multi-form API is. You know, get a grasp on it. Don't be put off by any <laughs> unfamiliar terms. Right, it's it's part of life. In, in, in the development world. Now, I'm looking at the, the chat. We don't have any questions here. So what I would do is I will flip over to a spreadsheet, which carries sure. the questions that people submitted when they registered, all right? So give me a moment. I'll go and pick up a few questions there. Um, and we, we've got about, I don't know, only five minutes, five, seven minutes. But I'll keep on asking questions until you say stop. It's too mm -hmm. early here and I... <laughs> Yeah, it's a big cup if, you know, so I've got the coffee going out, fueled, yeah. <laughs> okay, right, so these questions are not coming in in any particular orders, okay. Mm, what is it better for, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think we've covered some of this. How do how do you address the challenge of API standard, standardization? What is multi-form API? <clears throat> so I think that's been covered. Um, yeah. Then all oh, this is this is one you may have experience of this. Um, yeah. What's your opinion about current API adoption in the Indian market and some yeah. key implementations? Yeah, um, uh, very relevant given the audience here too. Um, so uh, with respect to um, what I've seen, you know, and obviously uh, uh, product manager, I sit over global, I, and I get a view of different. Uh, organizations as they kind of bubble up because IBM is working closely with them. And so I definitely have seen a lot in the financial industry uh, coming out of uh, India. Uh, when we first launched uh, OAPI management version five back in 2016, <clears throat> frankly, one of the first adopters that we had in production was uh, was a bank in, uh, in India. And uh, one of the things that they had recognized is they had all these internal integration services and they wanted to start developing new partner channels. And they said, you know what, we're gonna take, in this case, it was integration bus, IBM integration bus. So you know what, those services, they're already here. We already rely on them for some of our other core infrastructure. Um, and in this case, it was payments. Let's just uh, add a, a RESTful API la layer, uh, add a security uh, gateway, you know, that could allow us to work securely with external customers. And, uh, you know, basically uh, within, I think it was less than four, three, three four months, uh, they had actually uh, built up a new business model uh, around those existing certain services by just externalizing them. And so, uh, you know, there's quite a bit uh, that we now continue to observe uh, within banking and finance uh, with how, um, you know, the banking's uh, making those institutions kind of reusable um, for uh, for commerce uh, partners. A lot of things that are happening on mobile devices within India that are API based um, and uh, again, using the same kind of uh, a, you know, ecosystems where you get kind of the multi-channel, it's finance, but it's also retail. And it's also a social community. Uh, a lot of, uh, of that where uh, we see quite a bit of adoption. India is a burgeoning market really for free APIs. You talked about um, you how this enables... Sorry, one about standards, you know, and actually um, we talked about um, kind of the, the multi-form, you know, really now any endpoint. And, you know, we're not trying to get away from an open API, but, you know, as we see things like event-based architectures, let's pick an API definition and, and that. But I do see a lot of questions coming up about standards for um, uh, my organization. I want my APIs to be consistent and I adopt standards within the way I build. Because even though we have, uh, you know, something as wonderful as the OAI v3, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody in my organization is building APIs the same way. And um, 
you know, within IBM, one of the ways that we, we do promote standardization is um, when you're leveraging the integration technology uh, to build the API, <clears throat> we basically generate uh, a lot of that consistency around the API for you. So you build an integration flow and you don't ever even have to know the open API spec uh, or how it should be structured from a URL path. Uh, basically that's inherited as a standard out of the technologies. And so, you know, I think there's uh, something to be said and I know we're not only the only game in town that does that, I'm sorry. Um, but, um, you know, there's, uh, I think one is what tools are you using to build those APIs, uh, even from fundamentally that integration service layer up. Uh, and then the second area that I see uh, that there's a lot of growing interest in is uh, tools to scan my APIs, to look to see whether or not my security policy is being consistently applied in each one of those. Again, the, the format of the URL, um, and so um, a number of other dimensions there, uh, but uh, those scan, kind of scanning technologies. There's a number of uh, vendors that I see who are doing some interesting things there. Uh, from an IBM perspective, we have an open source project that we promote uh, in that area we call linting. Uh, you know, actually, if anybody was ever interested there, we feel free to, glad to point somebody to uh, what that open source technology is too. Uh, but I do think that, that standardization area is a, a key area of, of invest going forward. Yeah, sorry. Great. Uh, I think that would be useful to know any links people can get more information on this. Uh, now that ties to another question. Let me see. Um, so we talked about industry and e economy. Okay. Okay. The complexities of API management and how to secure APIs, especially when they're open to the um, public and other parts of the company. And I think you've touched on that. So it's about access and security from hmm. of these yeah. APIs, um, and and how you see this in the context of um, multi-form APIs and, yeah. and IBM. Yeah, security is king. Actually, the blog right that I, I I've made available recently about multi-form API management. We start off security because uh, if you're adopting API management, you want to move forward and you want to socialize your APIs and make sure that you have great visibility and consistency of use. But you can't do that unless you have security. Right, and so if you are making it available, uh, you, you must be concerned about the security. And frankly, the security is the gating, you know, the feature that you must solve in order to be able to achieve the socialization reuse that you want to under the API. So they really do go hand in hand. And this would be true of any of the, um, you know, multi-form API types, whether or not it's async API, open API, et cetera. So um, one of the things though uh, that I've been changing is <clears throat> how we look at the, the use of enterprise gateway and how we look at uh, things like Kubernetes infrastructure and microservices and proxy or gateway. And so, you know, where, where do you need the one and where do you need the other? And I like to talk when I advise customers, uh, you know, it's, uh, what are the security boundaries that you're interested in? And then, uh, you know, how do you enforce your policy within that respect, that security boundary? And, uh, you know, while I'm in a, let's say Kubernetes infrastructure where we've been doing a lot of work in our cloud packs, um, I'm building microservices and they get proxies associated to it. And the scope of that, that proxy is the application or the microservice. Um, you know, but then maybe for me, I've got 10 different microservices. And one of those is it being exposed as the API for other teams. That's a different boundary for me than the microservices that I want to freely communicate around. And I want different enforcement there. And then that Kubernetes cluster sits in my data center. And uh, there's another data center, uh, you know, where I have network boundaries that are interesting that come into enforcement. And then I have, of course, you know, outside of my organization, <clears throat> the, the DMZ where I need other enforcement. And at the end of the day, I have a JWT token where JWT is going to go through every one of those levels down to my microservice. Uh, and it has to be consistent and applied, you know. And um, so uh, what I usually, again, so what are those interesting security boundaries that you're concerned with? Uh, and what's the right technology to do the enforcement of the security policies as appropriate in each one of those. And so for sure, there's a the role for the enterprise gateway and that DMZ at the data center level, you know, down the stack. And at some point you flip into what are some of the lighter weight proxies that I can be applying to my microservice, you know, in some of those tight knit communication channels. Uh, and again, I think all of those are relevant from an API management program because I build a microservice, it is an API. Immediately I have a security question how should that be enforced? To whom? Who's getting enabled? Uh, do they even across network boundaries have access 
<clears throat> and if not, then you know I, I've just upped the the question of ah to make that available to that user community. Now I have to do something different than the lightweight proxy that I've had before. And so uh, yes, uh, immediately uh, you know a lot of security, uh, but the boundaries is the interesting thing to think through. Is that will let you know okay uh, which technology applies at what level level of the organization. And, uh, you know, I don't often say this, but you definitely want your CISO involved. <laughs> right. yeah. So, so, so yeah, simply put, it, it depends and it depends yeah. on architecture. It also depends on data management policies and it depends on those boundaries and how those are then drawn around the, the, the yeah. services that are provided. Could I provide your blog on the uh, chat? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, because uh, you talked about security, and yeah, I'm trying not to open a can of worms here. Actually, we're at the we're at the 25 minutes, so technically we're meant to end now. There, okay. there may be one or two questions. So, I don't, how do you feel about this? Shall I find another sure. question? Uh, are, you, are you on a roll? Uh, are you on a roll? Keep it succinct on, on the next one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not security. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Okay, is, is there anything else? Let me see. Scroll down here. Okay, maybe I'll say. Maybe I'll save you. Okay. Mm. Okay. Again, another one. How can we protect APIs to expose what what is needed? Mm. Oh, pretty. I think we're done. I think we're done on the okay. the main questions. All Is right. That, Thanks, thank Tony. You. Yeah, Pleasure. appreciated the uh, the morning uh, uh, session <laughs> and the opportunity for to so speak early. at API days. And yes, yeah. uh, good luck with the rest of the conference. Thanks so much, and uh, hope to see you at API days again. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Take care. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.